I'm sorry, Taylor. I've got the Angama pride. I didn't mean to. I've got only one Angama female, and she is hunting. She's using the ridge of the road to hide her from the view of an intently alert topi antelope. I didn't intend for it to be this way. Oh, is that a, ba is that a baby topi? Looks an awful lot like a little baby topi. In fact, it looks like a brand new topi. To topi. Oh, goodness. All right, let's catch up with her. She is trying. She's going to use this mitre drain over here to get closer. So a mitre drain is a, a basically a ditch that is dug along the edge of a road so that the water runoff created by the artificial situation of the road is mitigated. All right. So what we're going to be doing now is we are going to be going into a Facebook Live as well. So I'm going to be reintroducing where we are and what's going on. Obviously, you're not going to miss a moment of the action. You'll still be with us. Where's that topi? It's still there. She's still got a long way to go, but Alice, I think let's, let's get it going. Hello and welcome to the Masai Mara, first thing in the morning where we're with a stalking lioness who's utilizing the road and she's after an antelope that is off to the right of us, completely unsuspecting a topi antelope, there it is over there, and not just is it this female but it's also her tiny newborn hopping around. Quick introduction as to where we are and what's going on, my name is Jamie, this morning Dave is on camera with me and we're live here first thing in the morning in the Masai Mara of Kenya and we're watching this lioness utilize the road to actually stalk up and get closer to the topi antelope so what she's going to do now is she's going to utilize the terrain the grass is no longer long the wildebeest the migration have been through they've fed on most of the grass so she needs to use her environment in order to sneak up on the topi. Now you will notice other vehicles in the sighting. That's because there are tourists here. Look at that. Look at that belly crawl. We're enjoying the sighting with other people as well. The topi still completely hasn't noticed her. So she's going to crawl along. She's actually going to disappear along this mitre drain. So we're going to go and catch up with her. And I'm actually, I'm not going to move too much further forward. In this case, we're going to have to use a little bit of patience. There, she's popped out again. She's popped out once again. Okay, she's changed her mind. She's not going to use this mitre drain yet. This is fascinating. She is actually quite full-bellied, which I wasn't expecting because we've been sitting with this pride for the last three days and we haven't seen them feed. Look at the alertness in her body language. I didn't do it. It is amazing just how strong that maternal instinct is. And yes, the mother of the baby Topi might actually try to defend her little one if she is attacked by a lion. And she'll probably, there, there are lots of cases where in that situation, oh, it's so tiny, that is such a brand new little thing, dashing about. There are cases where the antelope have actually died. Antelope, zebra, buffalo, the mothers have actually died trying to protect their little ones. It's always very sad to see, but remember, maternal instinct goes both ways. And in this case, this lioness I know has got cubs. This whole pride together has got 13 cubs. Dana, I'm not sure. There are four lionesses in this pride. So I don't know if she's hunting alone or if there is another lioness waiting in ambush. It's very hard for me to tell. I'm gonna just get past and into the right position, so bear with me. We're just gonna take one quick look at the lioness. You can see her frozen in anticipation. There she goes. There's more than one topi antelope there. A 
Rebecca, speaking of, of lions and the calls that they make to each other, you want to know if lions, if other animals will react to the contact calls of lions. Yes, they will. That's one of the reasons why the contact calls between lions are so soft, especially between a mother and her cubs, because a hyena might get curious and come to investigate. Potentially another lion might hear it and come and investigate as well. There's the topi moving slowly forward, still completely unsuspecting. But the topi antelope is known as the policeman of the Mara, apparently, because they are always very alert and always on the lookout for potential predators. And I think, although this topi hasn't spotted her, I think that the mother of the newborn has. And you can see, by the way that that little one was playing earlier, it's already got a full use of its limbs. It's still very, very quick, even though it is, I think, probably only about a day or two old. Topies, I think they're aware that something's wrong, but they haven't quite worked out what it is. And remember, we've got the advantage of being slightly lower than the lioness, so we can see her clearly. But she is using the terrain, she's using the ridge to help her to sneak up on them. The one on the right is very alert. Yes, Mum, you be alert. Watch out for your little one. Because, as Laurie says, yes, she does look a lot like one of those termite mouths. In fact, so much so I've, I've lost her. Oh, there she is. I lost her for a second. I couldn't see where she was. And now it becomes a game of patience as well. She's intent, she's focused, but she's got absolutely no cover. She's got no way of getting closer to that topi. And the thing about stalking is that you have to see where the prey is so that the lions have to keep popping their heads up in order to keep track of the movement of their prey. And because this is completely live, we're filming this as it's happening, we have absolutely no idea just how it's going to play out. The amazing thing, Megan, about baby antelope in general is the fact that they are almost, not quite, but almost as fast as the adults from the moment they are born. So they, they're born slightly disproportionate, and I know I'm afraid we're looking right into the sun, but unfortunately I think this is going to be our best position for now. They're born slightly disproportionate. They seem to have very gangly, very long legs. And that's to allow them to keep up and to escape from things that will be setting out to hunt them from the moment they are born. But they're still slower than the adults. Almost as fast, but still slower. And not as strong and not as able to fight back, which makes them a very, very easy target for something like a lion. And that topi is very tiny. Riti. And I'm, I've done a terrible thing, so the car's going to shake a little. It's not Dave's camera work, it's me. I've had my foot on the brake the entire time in, in anticipation of what's going on. Riti, antelope do have good eyesight. I personally believe, and Topi as well, I personally believe that their eyesight is a lot better than we give them credit for. Yes, they rely on their hearing. Yes, they rely on their sense of smell. But if you've ever seen antelope spot movement in the way that they do, it is impossible to sneak up on them unless you are as subtle as a lion or perhaps a leopard. The mother topi's relaxed her attention. wondered that, Michael. It's a very, very good question. And Michael's question is, does the maternal instinct make the, the female more alert than she might otherwise be? And I think that my answer to that question is going to be no. No, I think that the antelope are alert regardless. She might be alert for smaller predators that she might otherwise have ignored. Perhaps something like a, a jackal, hmm, maybe not a jackal but a lone hyena or something like that would be far more likely to pick on an, a little one than it would be to pick on an adult. So she might be more aware of the, the smaller predators, but at the same time, I think that they are constantly on alert for lions. Look, she's looking and ducking back down. 
got to play her cards right. But remember, I mentioned that there are four lionesses in this pride. I don't know where the other three are. And it's entirely possible that this ambush has been planned. They could very easily be on the other side of this ridge. This lioness might have come all the way around. I don't know. I can't tell. I can't see. Oh, there she goes. The, the topi's now trotting across in front of the lioness, still a fair distance away. She hasn't managed to get close enough. And Topia, one of the fastest antelope out here. Sankar, you say what an excellent view and a wonderful experience. I have to say, it's not how I was planning on spending my morning, but that's half the fun of filming wildlife pretty much 24-7, which is what we do. Look, I think, I think this little baby's going to get away. And we don't choose sides, but it's nice to see this callow little one making its way to safety because at this point, this lioness is too far away to get it. It is such a beautiful morning out here in Kenya. We're in the Masai Mara, the sun is shining, everything's clean from the rain last night. And we've got these amazing images. Now let's just give it a few more minutes just to see what this lioness does. Remember, we don't know where the rest of the pride are. I think she, her attention was attracted by that little antelope. And in this case, the topi have won the battle of life and death today. But that's okay. The lioness is well fed. She's got quite a full belly. And it's a happy ending for the little baby topi. She can, the lioness can still feed her cubs. And the topi, for now, wanders away quite safely. Uh, I think that will bring us to the end of those of you watching us on social media. It's been an absolute pleasure sharing this experience with you. I hope you enjoyed it and stay tuned because we're going to be filming many, many moments just like this one here in the Masai Mara.